It was so dreadful for so long, the fans just wanted something to embrace. Right now, it's believer fever. Could we actually keep our team and could things work out? Rising from the dead, I believe. In 2002, Omar Minaya fielded his phone call of dreams. You're in the Dominican Republic and Bud Selig calls you. What was your reaction? Well, first of all, it was like the Montreal Expo. I want you to be the general manager of the Montreal Expo. So we're going to be contracted at the end of the year. It's going to be for one year. Three months earlier, Major League Baseball owners had voted to contract two foundering teams, targeting Montreal. You were going to be a temp. I was going to be a temp. Manaya was the assistant GM of his hometown Mets, but the 43-year-old still wanted to run his own show and make history as the first Hispanic GM. I liked Omar professionally and personally. I was looking for somebody who knew talent, who knew who had to build a farm system in this organization, whatever was going to happen to it. You could have put Billy Bean on steroids in this situation. It was just going to be a, a tough go regardless. When he arrived at spring training with Tony Siegel as his assistant and Frank Robinson as his manager, the cupboard was bare. And that was before he looked at his roster. I remember calling my secretary. I said, do I need to bring my computer? And she said, Tony, bring your computer, your desk, your chairs. They took everything. And she wasn't kidding. Jeffrey Loria's ownership group had sold the Expos to Major League Baseball and bought the Florida Marlins, essentially taking everything that wasn't nailed down, including internal scouting reports. In 72 hours, Manaya hired an entire scouting, coaching, and front office staff before pitchers and catchers reported. It was a lot of phone calls, uh, maybe two hours of sleep in those 72 hours. It was pretty much, I heard he's a good guy, let's give him a job. At that time, nobody really gave a darn about us. Nobody took us seriously. In fact, some people didn't even know we existed. But everyone knew on June 27th, Manaya shocked baseball by trading minor leaguers Grady Sizemore, Cliff Lee, and Brandon Phillips, future all-stars, for ace right-hander Bartolo Colon. In Montreal, next year was not an option. Honestly, I thought it was a joke. I thought he was just teasing that he got, oh, they got Colon, and now we're, I was like, wow. I was wondering if the other 29 team said to you, what is this general manager doing? Nobody ever said a word. I promised Omar right from the start, we're not gonna interfere. The Expos missed the playoffs in 2002. The following season, with contraction on hold, the team would endure a travel schedule like no other. With 22 home games in Puerto Rico. We had one road trip that went from Puerto Rico to Seattle when we played the next day. I just can't get over being on an airplane for nine and a half hours. Despite improbable odds, the Expos found themselves tied for a playoff spot on August 28th after a sweep of the Phillies. This may tie it up! It didn't seem that fans would ever come back. They're getting five or six or 7,000 people a game, and suddenly people start showing up. This was, you know, 94, this was 81, this was all of those. All of a sudden, politicians started showing up. Yeah, this could happen again. Rising from the dead! There's 35,000 people here. We beat the Phillies. We came from an eight-run deficit. Somebody, please, save us. I believe! Privately, Manaya could see a long-term future if the Expos made the playoffs. He saw it happen with a dormant Seattle franchise in 1995. I felt that was possible. I've seen situations when a team win, things change. If we can win, if we can get to the playoff, knowing the history of the franchise. Something positive could have happened. Like every team, the Expos were looking forward to their September 1st call-ups. Guys were beat up. Our catchers were, took a pounding. But when rosters expanded across baseball, there was no payroll allocated for the wards of the state. 
Look, Omar had a budget, and and uh, and he understood what he had to do, and but he was free to make any deals that he wanted within the confines of that, or do whatever he thought was necessary. This is a direct conflict of interest. The Expos are competing for a playoff spot, and again, I don't know if these guys would have made any difference, but why for four or five or six or seven hundred thousand dollars, it was nothing. Why wouldn't Major League Baseball, to maintain its integrity, grant you a little more money? It was those are the rules that we were operating under. When we went into the clubhouse, we told the guys they weren't getting any help. It was like pricking a balloon with a pin. When we just fell out of it very, very quickly. Were they fearful of the Expos going to the postseason and somebody coming in and saving them? I, I suspect it may have been in the back of their mind. I've received a call from Bud Selig, and after 30 years of waiting and waiting, there will be baseball in Washington in 2005.